the Assassin King 120 White from Thermal Right. It's white, it has ARGB, and it looks good. But is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, and PC case fans. I release videos every week, so if this is something that you like and you're interested in, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It does help out a lot. I will have timestamps in the description so you can jump to whatever interests you, but I do recommend you watch the whole review. Now, before I get into this review, just to have full disclosure, Thermalrite did send me over the CPU cooler along with some other fans and CPU coolers to review. But as always, all the opinions expressed in this video are mine. Now, what I've got here is the Thermalrite Assassin King 120 White. You can pick this up off of Amazon.com for 43 US dollars. There is also the Thermalrite Assassin King 120 Black, the Assassin King 120 Plus, which is push pull and the Assassin King 120. So there are a few options to choose from that range in price between 37 US dollars and 44 US dollars. Okay, let's go over what you get in the box. There is the heatsink and fan, of course. There is an installation guide, an extra set of fan clips, a small tube of thermal compound, the mounting hardware, an ARGB connector hub thing, so if your motherboard doesn't have an ARGB header, you can still use this to control the ARGB LEDs on the fan. Okay, taking a closer look at the heatsink, there are five 6mm continuous heat pipes. They are not direct contact. The white on the heatsink looks well coated. I don't see any missing spots. Moving on to the fan, the fan is a Thermalrite TLC12WS. The W stands for white and the S indicates that it's an ARGB fan. It is a four pin PWM fan. It has nine blades. It has a fluid dynamic bearing. There are white rubber pads on all the corners. It has a rated max RPM of 1500 and a rated minimum RPM of 400. Now the dimensions of this cooler with the fan attached is 154 millimeters high by 120 millimeters wide by 73 millimeters deep. Based off these dimensions, you will have no RAM clearance issues for micro ATX and ATX builds. For socket compatibility, the Assassin King 120 is compatible with most Intel mainstream sockets, as well as the HPC sockets. Now there is an LGA 1700 kit that you can buy, and I did end up sending an email to Thermalrite this morning on if they're planning to actually add that kit into the box itself. Now, once I've actually gotten the response to that question, I'll pin it in the comments. But as of right now, I believe the only way to get the LGA 1700 kit is to buy it separately. And for AMD, it's compatible with AM4. Okay, moving on to how to install the CPU cooler. I will be installing it onto an AM4 motherboard. The installation between Intel and AMD sockets is different. So if you are planning on installing it into an Intel socket, please check your installation guide. Now, as always, before you start, make sure you have a clean, flat, and sturdy surface. You should have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat, but in a pinch, you can always use the box that your motherboard came in. You will also need a PH2 screwdriver. To install this cooler onto AM4, you will need the backplate that came with your motherboard. Now, you need to align the holes on your motherboard to the backplate. With the motherboard lying flat, place the plastic spacers over each of the holes. Then find the AM4 mounting bars and the mounting screws. Place the mounting screws through the holes in the mounting bars. Then align the mounting bars with the plastic spacers. Then screw the mounting screws into the holes on the back plate, making sure the mounting bars are facing out. Once the mounting bars are installed, it's time to clean off the CPU with some isopropyl alcohol, then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Now make sure to remove the fan from the heatsink and the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate. Once you have, place the heatsink cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screw threads on the mounting bar to the screws on the fastening bar. 
Then screw the two spring retention screws on the fastening bar to the mounting bars. Once you're done, you can install the fan onto the heatsink and plug the PWM and the ARGB connectors onto your motherboard. And we're done the installation. Now we'll go over the fan's PWM range. I'll also show the ARGB LEDs and I'll also show you the uh, little hub connector thing as well. First, the PWM range. So at 100% PWM, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 1560-ish and this has a DBA of 35.2. As always, this is taken from 20 inches away on an open air test bench. Dropping the PWM down to 0%, the motherboard is showing an RPM of 410-ish, and this has the DBA at or below my noise floor of 32 dBA. Now for the ARGB LEDs, I think they look really good. The colors are very vivid, but what do you guys think? Okay, the hub connector thing. This hub is powered by SATA. There are three buttons on it. The B button changes the color, the M button changes the style, and the S changes the speed of the style. Okay, with that all done, on to the temperature testing. Now, if you haven't watched my CPU cooler testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll put a card along the top, and I'll also have it linked down in the description. So the Assassin King 120, in the 35 dBA noise equalized 67 watt test, had the CPU temperature at 59.5 C. Then at full speed, the temperature was at 59.2 C. So really no temperature difference between the 35 dBA and the full speed testing. For the 87 watt test, when noise equalized to 35 dBA, the Assassin King 120 had the CPU temperature at 72.8 C which has it pretty much matching the eSports Duo. Then at full speed, the temperature doesn't change at all and is still 72.8 C. Now for the 150 watt testing, in the noise equalized test, the CPU had an average temperature of 79.1 C, with only the water cooling coolers having a lower temperature. Letting the fan run at full speed has the average CPU temperature still at 79.1 C, so again, no temperature difference between the 35 dBA and the full speed test. Okay, so what do I think of the Assassin King 120 from Thermalrite? First off, it's a great CPU cooler at a really competitive price. But who comes up with these names? Is it supposed to be the Assassin of Kings or the King's Assassin or the... I don't really know. It, I, I, I don't get it. Now with the weird naming aside, what does matter is the performance. And this cooler performs very well in the 87 and 150 watt testing. However, I do have some minor issues with this cooler, i.e. the white version and it having bare metal mounting bars because the black version has the mounting bars painted or coated black. Now, why doesn't the white version get the coating? I don't know. Because you have this really nice looking white heatsink with this bare metal mounting bar. Why? Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you coat them? I understand this is a very small issue, but what I don't get is you coated the black. Why wouldn't you then coat the white? It just is very weird to me and is messing with my OCD. Okay, moving on from that because my OCD can't take it anymore. The base version of the Assassin King 120 has to be the best price to performance CPU cooler I've tested by far because the 37 US dollars on Amazon for this cooler is insane because you'll get the same performance as the white cooler. You just don't get the ARGB. So if you are looking for the best price to performance, the Assassin King 120 is what you want to get. Because I would be perfectly comfortable overclocking a 1500X or Intel's equivalent with this cooler and it's just 37 US dollars. That's pretty crazy. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching, maybe hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Please follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT. I also have a Discord server. I post all of the... Uh, charts in these videos up on the HFG Discord server. Now you will need to be a member to see them, but it is really easy to become a member. All you have to do is agree to the server rules, and it's as simple as just don't be a dick. 
You also might want to check out these videos. They should be along the same lines of what you just watched. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time. Yes, I'm having a scotch because it's fucking delicious.